that I thank the Speaker for his speech, and by the second speaker, and the ECC Phyllis off, and to Sean Butler to be the case of
Worst case scenario, this is basically cultural imperialism where we impose values upon them that they don't share. That causes ruptures in the society in the long run when people don't buy into that. But, but, and, and such like, this is why most post conflict societies rupture apart. Or the, the second problem, the other reason post conflict societies tend to rupture apart is that things never necessarily get solved. The things about a peaceful transition is that individuals get together and they solve their problems, they create the national narrative together. External intervention means that there's always been a force outside that are closed upon you, so there's always a propaganda motive by the people who lost that we have this value necessarily opposed on it. States require authority to derive itself from legitimacy and from notions of consent. States that are born in so baptism right. of fire, and I'll take in a second this, always leads to more suffering, more suffering that people can never right. ever codify how much that is. Yes? Your partner said that there were no objective truths worth fighting for, and yet you're now saying there are objective truths about how the state should be predicated and what makes it legitimate. Which is it? I'm just, okay, there are, there's no truth but there are grades of bad things, right? And, and the point is we have no concept of knowing where upon that spectrum our decisions will lie. So any moral decision we make is inherently flipping a coin, right, and deciding on the fate of millions of people based on ins insufficient evidence, right? Duties of the self. What duties do we owe others? Firstly, any duty or any decision we make must be, must be void or balanced against our own personal calculations. At, in war, you tend to risk your life because people tend to die a lot, right? So, recognizing that you only have one life, the, the personal life value and all of your experiences, all of your, all of your rights, all of yourself, everything is contained in your ability to remain alive. The personal valuation of your life is infinite, right? So therefore, any good necessarily must come above that. All, all, all it will always be lesser than a personal gain, right? In terms of the toddler example, right, which is this wonderful disanalogy of let's let's strip this down to, to its bare bones. One, there is, as John said, no appreciation of the context within that. Wartime situations are incredibly messy things. We have no idea what's going on. On top of that, you are now adjudicating that an evil life is le ne necessarily less than any other life. You are one person making a choice. Entire states, entire judicial systems are based on the idea that that was a really bad idea because people make really bad decisions. Why? Because we are perfect beings. And secondly, individual logic has a tendency to get worked a lot by institutionalization. So when you shoot a soldier, recognize that just, just as you are warped by your experiences and your idea of the world, so are they. They are institutionalized by the states that they live in, by the policies of their government, by the policies of the tyrants. Why do they deserve to die just because they were born in a shit country? Why do we have the right to kill them just because their leader has brainwashed them into fighting for that cause? That is the question they have to answer in opposition, and that's why we should never fire bullets at those people.